know if you guys can see it. It looks like a cow, but I can assure you it's not. Better get my battle axe ready here. Here he comes. See if I can sneak up behind. He is terrifying. Oh my goodness. Whoa, that was a close call. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's take a look at the play sound command. So let's just type in play sound here and let's take a look at the syntax. So it has the required inputs of a sound, a player, which is the target player, optional inputs then of X, Y, and Z, volume, pitch, and minimum volume. Okay, let's talk about the easy ones first. So the X, Y, and Z is pretty self-explanatory. That's where you want the sound to be played at a particular location. If you wanted to do it relative to a player or an entity, you could just use that tilde symbol for X, Y, and Z, something like that. So that will play it at the current location for that entity or that target. And the volume, what that does is that influences how far away the player has to be to hear the sound. So there is a default, and if you adjust the, the default, it's just making the location for the X, Y, and Z further or closer away for the respective target. So what else is there? There was the pitch. So pitch is actually changing the speed at which the sound is played and the um, pitch, <laughs> obviously the pitch. So what that basically means is it stretches out or compresses down the particular uh, sound that you're playing. So that's how at the start there I was playing uh, an angry growling sound. That was just with a reduced pitch or a pitch uh, set to zero. So it actually slowed down the playback. So yeah, it sounded all creepy and uh, and low bass and stretched out. So that's how you can achieve those kind of sounds. And the other input was minimum volume. So minimum volume, what that does is if a player is outside the range of where you define an X, Y, and Z, and you still want that player to hear the particular sound that you're playing, what you can do is set a minimum volume. And that sets an offset so players outside of the X, Y, and Z can still hear the sound, but it's with respect to a particular volume that you've set. So you could still set it, make it sound like it's still reasonably far away or reasonably close, depending on where the t player is and how close you want the sound to be heard. Heard? Heard? heard. <laughs> how, how close you want the sound to be heard. So, yeah, so that's that's pretty much the play sound. Now, the most complex thing about the sound command is the actual sound name. So there's a bit of un misunderstanding about the sound name, and that's the second input here. So that's here, the sound value that we need to define. And what that is, it's actually the name of the sound event. So it's not the name of the sound file, um, it's the name of the sound event. So what's the difference? If we take a look at the Minecraft resource pack folder, which is on the PC edition, and we've I've just got a test resource pack in here, which I've called test RP. And inside here, we've got uh, the typical folder structure that you need for a resource pack. So inside your assets folder, Minecraft, there's this sounds.json file. So inside this file, what we have here is these whole grouping of sounds defined by the events. So this here is described as the sound event, and this is the location for the respective sound. So these are just some sample sounds that I've created for this video. And I've got three events. So I've got this fx.siren, which is just any string that I've defined. And I've got fx.levelup and mob.zombie.say. So here I'm replacing the default zombie growling sounds with some custom sounds that I've found. And I've also added these two new custom sounds for a siren and a level up sound. So if we just jump back into this folder structure, you can see here that the sounds are located within a folder structure here. So I've got FX, folder, and then level up and siren. But they don't have to correspond to these respective locations. They could be anywhere. And as long as you define it inside your sounds.json file for the sounds path. So this here is the respective file name for where the file is. Um, you'll be able to reference it by the sound event. So don't forget, these are sound events. And we're using them by these names, not by these names. So just keep that in mind when you're dealing with sounds. So that sounded like a lot of theory. Let's look at some practical examples. So let's first of all play one of those custom sounds. So first of all, let's load up the resource pack that I have. This is just the test resource pack. So done to that. Yep. Okay, so let's first of all play, let's play that level up sound. So let's just go play sound. And I had it in my, the name of the event was fx start level up. And I'm just gonna play it for me. <laughs> there you go. 
That's <laughs> just a custom level up sound that you can now reference through a resource pack and play through the play sound command. So that's pretty cool. Now, the way that I had used that sound effect, the effects sound. Ooh. <laughs> First of all, maybe we should address what that sound is. So do you remember I had replaced those three sound effects for the zombie? I have one of these terrifying little guys down here. <laughs> And because there's three different default growling sounds these guys can make, it's playing one of those growling sounds whenever it wants to, just through the game. So I'm not running the play sound command, it's referencing those growling sounds that I'll put into the game. Ooh, that sounded a little evil growl, that one. <laughs> and yeah, it's you can muck around with the default sounds. And that little gremlin sound is freaking me out. So we'll get away from you, you little buddy. So let's look at some more examples. Now let's play around with some record playing discs. So as of Minecraft 1.7, we can play records and game sounds all through the play sound command. You couldn't do that prior to 1.7 without using mods. And it's a pretty cool feature. So let's look at some examples here. So let's just jump up here and we'll play, let's play a record. So let's play sound. Uh, now the event name is records. Now let's pick one of the records. So let's play wait and let's play it for myself. Now, I could be typing in these tilde symbols for my current location, but it will do that by default if I don't put those in. So let's just run that command. Groovy. So now we have a, a record playing just there. So let's run over here and we'll also play a track over here. Let's play still. And let's play one more. Let's come over to this little pyramid thing. Let's play another track over here. How about we play Cat? Okay. So, you'll hear as I run around, the different records come in and out of vocal range, or vocal audio range. So now the different uh, volumes that come into effect of how far away the player needs to be to hear the sound. And you can influence that through that uh, volume input of how far the player needs to be. You can get some real stereo sound happening here between the different music tracks. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you can have a lot of fun with the play sound command. Um, obviously, there's a lot of possibilities. Now, unfortunately, you can't stop playing a particular sound for a player. So, unfortunately, even though I'm playing this record here, I can't stop playing this particular record here. <laughs> um, that's one of the limitations currently with the play sound command. So hopefully that gets uh, an update in future versions of Minecraft where hopefully you'll be able to stop playing a particular sound for a player or detect when a particular sound is playing for a player. I think there's uh, quite a few things map makers can do with those kind of features. Um, but for now you can just muck around with these kind of sound events and play them at your leisure and yeah, it, I think it makes the game a little bit more lively and it absolutely brings resource packs to life. So that's why a lot of the resource packs now have uh, all these custom sounds, all possible from the 1.7 update, in addition to writing the default game sounds. And yeah, it creates a lot of fun. So on that note, let's play one more custom sound. What do I have here? So let's go play sound. And I'm going to, it's one of my sounds. So it's fx.siren, playing it for me. And on that note, as the cops come for us, we've got to get out of here, so thanks for watching guys. Stick around and keep watching that uh, place, uh, playlist that I have for going through the Minecraft commands. And until next time, catch you guys. See ya.